I look like Mrs. Claus. Oh my word. Hey y'all, this is Sherilyn, just getting this 333 little homestead. And I made this video and I realized I probably didn't, I didn't really like the way that I opened it. So here I am opening the video. And today I'm just going to take you along with me as I'm doing some preserving, canning, dehydrating, um, stewing some bone broth, different things. Um, but I also am going to have a heart-to-heart -heart chat with you guys. You know, just heart touch base and be real. So I hope you enjoy the video. Here it is. Hey y'all, I am canning chicken. I found a new way to can chicken. And this is not a canning tutorial. Sorry for the music in the background. Lucas is back there um, listening to music. We just finished homeschool. And I wanna share with you this new way that I'm canning chicken. I usually like to do bone in when it comes to legs and thighs, but that takes a lot of room. And the can, so I started baking chicken. There's, in these jars in this bowl is 20 pounds of leg quarters. And seriously, after it's baked and cooled off, I just remove the skin and the bones and just stick it in here. And it doesn't matter how full you fill it because we're gonna top it with water or chicken broth. Let me show you what I did with all those bones. They're all in here. Let me back up a little bit. They're all in here. I've got them on 250. I put a splash of apple cider vinegar in there and salted it. I also left the skin and the fat in there because what I'm going to do with this when it's done is I'm going to strain all the bones and the icky bits out. And I'm just going to make room in the bottom of my fridge for this big um, this insert in my roaster comes out. It's like a big pan. And I'm going to put it in the bottom shelf of the fridge and let it sit in there and congeal. Then I'm going to pull the fat off and I'm going to freeze that fat because it's a really good fat, you know, as far as, as I'm cooking with, or adding to stuff for flavor, sauteing with. So I'm going to also save the fat from that. If you're wondering why you don't see my face, here, it's because I look a hot mess. So let me show you this chicken, and then um, you guys, I don't even have you on a tripod. This is so impromptu. I'm gonna show you this chicken, talk about it for a second, and then I'm gonna show you what we're dehydrating. And then we might have a talk. So seriously here, I have just filled that jar of chicken up about that much. That's a good serving for me. I'll wash my hand off. This is going to be a very unprofessional video, guys. You're just here on the homestead hanging out with me today. Just using water. So right now, and I'm going to fill that jar up to the one inch head space. And, of course, I'm going to take something and debubble it. You know, get all the bubbles out. Then I'll wipe the rims, put the lids on, and can it. So let me get this stuff in the canner. And you can it for the same amount of time as you would a raw pack method, which is 75 minutes, pints, 90 minutes. For quarts, let me get this all in the canner, and then I'll show you what we're dehydrating. I also have this. It's the Orrington Farms broth base and seasoning for chicken and when I'm doing chicken and beef sometimes I'll um, put some of this in there so you didn't have to just put you know plain water in there just gonna go around and debubble all of them and wipe the rims I have a complete canning chicken 101 um, tutorial video up and if you want to go back and watch that that's how to can um, chicken that's uh, raw packed that all the canning principles are the, exactly the same it's just the way we're putting this in the jar is different so 
so I'm going to be dehydrating some okra. I tried planting some okra for the summer and my soil, because I didn't have a lot of mulch, my soil was pretty um, dried out and I just didn't get a good result. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> top and tail that okra and just chop it up in, well maybe, I'll show you, maybe that big, half inch, third of an inch. I'm going to pop it on the dehydrator. It works great. I have okra frozen and okra canned because my dad's okra did fantastic. And he uh, still has okra going like crazy. And they're like nine feet tall, some of them. It's crazy. So I want to talk to you guys today. Just something that's on my mind. And I tried to put together this whole, you know, thoughtful, thought-out video on it. And I'm just, I'm just going to be real. I want to know, are you guys um, noticing food shortages? I think Fox Business announced, they, they shared that California farmers are warning us that the drought coupled with supply chain issues and shortages um, <clears throat> it's going to really affect you know California's tomato crop and that California's tomato crop is what the majority of our tomato based products that are processed you know your spaghetti sauce um, ketchup salsa things like that that the majority of those tomatoes come out of California, so I'm wondering what those prices are going to look like in the future. If some things are even going to be on the shelf, you know, are they going to discontinue some of our favorite items? So, um, just wondering, during the bird flu, you know, they killed all those chickens, and then we saw a chicken shortage, a chicken wing shortage, and then there was, about every time I would go in the store, I think it took me six weeks or so before I could find um, just boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And it was kind of crazy. So I'm wondering if you guys are seeing that stuff. If not, you might want to look into it. Now they're talking about potato shortages and something going on with potatoes and people are complaining that the potatoes they're buying from the store are already starting to go bad and there's something going on. I'm not here to give you the facts on that stuff, but I just know that if you're not putting away some food, you might want to think about it. Um, I've been canning like crazy. I'm dehydrating this okra. I have plenty of okra in the freezer. I could have told my dad, no, that's okay. I don't want it. I have okra canned. Um, and I have okra planted in my garden for the fall here in South Florida. I'm hoping it'll do really good down here. I'm hoping. <laughs> and, you know, I just want to talk to you guys and just maybe stir some, uh, stir some interest. If you haven't been seeing anything about food shortages, just to know that they're saying the, um, Ranchers out in Texas had to sell their cattle off early, a lot of them in Texas and Missouri and places like that. And that's a huge part of America's beef supply. So they're saying the beef prices we're seeing now are a reflection of the market being flooded and the prices should be lower. But that they're not going to have as many, you know, next year it takes. Guys, it takes a while for a cow to get pregnant and give birth, and then for the rancher to raise that beef out. It takes a while. And if they're selling off, you know, their herds because the drought, they can't, they don't have grass, they can't find hay. I don't know how many months I was looking for hay here in South Florida. And, um, just to, you know, mulch the walkways in my garden and stuff. And I couldn't find it. Months and months and months. And that actually, you know, caused me, I was dependent on that hay to mulch my garden. And that kind of caused me to um, have issues with my soil. Because 
it, it wasn't mulched properly and it dried out. And then I lost some of my crops. So, I don't know. I'm just chatting and working as I'm putting up some food. Um, lots of reasons to put up food. I did put up a video the other day talking about five reasons to store food that have nothing to do with current events. So, that might be a good one if you want to, if you're still on the fence about storing food and you don't want to be considered a doomsday prepper, you know, <laughs> and you don't want to be a crazy hoarder and all the things that people think of and they have people tell them, I'm storing food for the apocalypse. I'm not storing food for the apocalypse, guys. But I was really glad that when there were chicken shortages, that I had my own canned chicken on the shelf. I've still got more. And I did some beans yesterday. That's pinto beans and black beans. I might do a video on that because I just do the cheapest, easiest way. Because I can be a little lazy, so I want to do easy ways sometimes. <laughs> and, um,. I'm going to get these in the dehydrator. I think I'm, I'm just sort of sharing my thoughts while I work. I'm going to finish this up and show you these going in the dehydrator. I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out and tell you what we're going to do with it. Sorry for the poor lighting. We're in the laundry room and I keep my, my dehydrator in here on the dryer. Look at these. I got these silicone sheets for my... Excalibur dehydrator. I'm really looking forward to like when I have an excess of eggs and scramble them and dehydrate them and then grind them into powder. You can reconstitute them later. Or what I really want to do is make yummy fruit roll-ups. It's gonna be yummy. Okay, I do have the Excalibur 9 tray dehydrator. And I'm just gonna Use the little mesh mats that it came with and spread it out kind of evenly. There's no, you know, no special tips or tricks. I sort of spread it out. The other day I did um, one and a half gallon bags. Today was just a one gallon bag. And it filled up about seven of these trays. And I'll show you that in a second. But I'm seriously just, you know what I did the other day? I didn't use the top tray. There we go. I hear the canner coming up to pressure. I'm going to finish spreading these out and then I'm going to show you that other okra. And if you stayed this long in the video, thank you. I really appreciate it. And if you are putting away food or preserving food or whatever, um, more power to you. Just, I'm really happy to hear that. Let's just uh, be as self-sufficient as we can, guys. Now, I am going to finish this and then there's something funny. I don't have my glasses on and I gotta get up here on a step stool to see the temperature thingy. I still can't read it. I'll put it on the screen down here which temperature I'm using. And then we're gonna dehydrate this. Um, it'll probably run all this evening and I'll check it at bedtime and see if they're super crispy. And if they are then we'll just jar them up, and if not, we'll then I'll turn off the dehydrator and turn it back on in the morning. Look what I found. Can you see this? This is a garden layout I drew for last year's garden. I wish it turned out that pretty. <laughs> um, I ended up changing it, but I did draw it out to see kind of what would go where. But I think one day, when I'm old and gray, and older and grayer, maybe my grandkids will 
I look at this and say, that's lovely. I want to keep it. Hey, Lucas. Hi, Lucas. <laughs> okay, we have a minute. I just put the weight on the counter and we have a minute before it starts dancing and jiggling, making lots of noise. This is from the gallon and a half of okra that I had. And you can see it. Hi. Hi, Lucas. Everybody say hi, Lucas. <laughs> it came out really super tiny and really shrunk up, which happens with dehydrating. But what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to use it like if well, I can cook some of my stewed tomatoes and Oops. just throw a handful of this in there when it's cooking or if I'm making soup or whatever, I can just throw it in the soup and it'll rehydrate and cook. It'll be great. And hear how crunchy it is? So if you made it to the end of this video, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today while I just did the kitchen prep, homestead kitchen day, and while we had a little chat. And um, I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm going to wash up yesterday's canning, the chicken and the beans, and I might get a cup of coffee, sit down, watch a gardening homesteading YouTube video. Until next time, guys. Bye, y'all.